Welcome to the closing lecture of this course about efficient HVAC systems. This course was aimed at giving you basic knowledge about HVAC designs. A HVAC design as HVAC designs entails estimations of heating and cooling loads and demand, knowledge about energy supply systems and about indoor environmental quality, the course started with a recap of the three first MOOCs of the professional course program. In week two, we took a quite classical way of looking at HVAC systems and you learned about the handling of humid air and all related processes. You learned how to use the Molière diagram and the psychrometric card and how heating, cooling, humidification and dehumidification of air works. During the third week, you applied your knowledge on the design of air handling units and you became aware of why there are so many ducts in a building. Some are for the transport of air, some are for the transport of heat, which can be done either by air systems or water systems, also called hydronic systems. You learned about advantages and disadvantages of both systems and how to size ducts and hydronic emitters at room levels, accounting for energy and comfort. The fourth week was devoted to the control of HVAC systems and you've learned here that control is not only about sensors and actuators but also about a design allowing for control, meaning things like zones, peak shaving, buffers and combinations of emitters in rooms and combinations of generators. We introduced PNIDs, process and instrumentation diagrams. And finally, you studied briefly how control works with sensors, set values, controllers and actuators. During the last week of this course, we put everything together to show which aspects must be accounted for to come to efficient HVAC designs. Of course, air handling units, ducts and emitters are very important, but for a HVAC designer is load calculation and finding ways to reduce peak demand and energy use also essential, as well as choosing suitable generators for the energy supply with low use of natural resources and low emissions and of course the environmental air quality. You studied many different combinations of generators and also learned how a design process is organized. It is absolutely impossible to handle in depth all aspects of HVAC design in five weeks. I do hope that with this course you have understood how exciting is HVAC design, especially if you want to go for environmental sustainability. What I am personally very fond of is that it brings together almost everything that you've learned theoretically about physics, thermodynamics, fluid dynamics, behavior, architecture, materials, etc. And it concentrated in a design. Of course, in time, many things have been automated. For instance, you can generate automatically ducts layouts in CAD, which will calculate the pressure drop as well. But still, understanding how it works is necessary to make the innovations that will help us towards a sustainable future. One of the big innovations at the moment comes from the increased importance of operational control. The time where HVAC engineers were just making a design and never looked at the real actual working of the system is past and more and more has to be done to ensure excellent operational performances. For this, building energy management systems able to make intelligent decisions based on the millions of sensor data points they collect are very promising and a lot of research is done in this area. And we are also expecting a lot of developments in the area of circular design, in which a lot of attention is paid to reuse of materials and components. And who knows what we can expect in terms of new materials and new energy carriers like hydrogen. Finally, I want to thank the whole team who helped develop this MOOC, Efficient HVAC Design, in particular Rins Lindemann and Eloise Ruby from Delft Extension School. I am also immensely grateful to late Professor Dolph van Paassen, who contributed with his many readers, research and kindness to make researchers and students enthusiastic about HVAC systems. I owe him a lot. 
I feel also grateful about many old colleagues from Deans Consultants Engineers for their contribution to my developments in this area. Thank you, Paul, Melanie, Gino, Peter, Rodica, Xavier, Stefan and many others. Also, many thanks to the Dutch Association of HVAC Engineers, TVVL, for, and for the refreshing discussion with many of its members. Many of the PNIDs in this course are based on work by Ari Tal from the Hague University of Applied Sciences. Many thanks, Ari. And finally, thanks to you who followed this course. I'm very curious about your feedback and propositions for improvement. It has been a great pleasure. Goodbye and success in your career further.